So some of y'all might remember Jason Loose. I uh, built a, a bass banjo for him, which basically I just took a bass guitar neck and put it on a banjo pot. Oh, a while back. <clears throat> and then later on, I, uh, I, uh, I had a, a um, mandolin. It's kind of a big mandolin made out of mahogany. It's a pretty neat instrument, but it didn't sound that great. And I, I, I sort of gave, swapped, slash sold it to him meaning I said take this home with you if there's anything you want you can pay me or swap me something or something <clears throat> so he kept it a while and decided he wanted to keep it and he brought me this banjo in exchange for it now this is uh, this is a pretty good really cheap banjo makes a good be beginner banjo has a, an aluminum pot which aluminum is not known for great sound quality so you know don't, don't expect a banjo like this to sound like a Gibson master tone or a or a, or a Vega um, you know tuba phone or something like that but it's good enough to learn on and I have a habit <clears throat> of anyone who expresses an interest in banjos and wants to play one I have a habit of giving them a banjo and teaching them to play whether they like it or not and uh, we was at a church party with some friends the other day, and this lady said, I always wished I had learned to play the banjo. My daddy used to play the banjo. I always wanted to play the banjo. And I thought to myself, now, if you ain't serious, you shouldn't have said that in front of me, because I'm the kind of guy that'll uh, <clears throat> get you a banjo and teach you how to play it right quick. So this one is, for a junkie banjo, it's pretty good. The uh, I was gonna put some nylon strings on it, but the problem with nylon strings is they're very stretchable and they don't stay in tune real well. And if you're learning to play the banjo and you've got nylon strings on there, you may never actually, um, you know, learn to play because it'll be out of tune all the time. And I'm also a big fan of old strings. Now, I know a lot of people, they get a banjo, the first thing they do is put new strings on it. Or every, every time they go to play, they put new strings on it. And I think that's silly. Uh, I think old strings acquire a certain amount of character, and I love often the way they sound. And because the action is not real hard on this banjo, I think I'm gonna, I, I was gonna put these nylons on here because it would be easy on her fingers, but it's not hard to match this at all because of the neck alignment. So I think I'm gonna leave these strings right on here, clean it up as well as I can, which basically means this, you can see the head is just really quite filthy. But I'm gonna try to work up under the strings with some cleaner, kind of go around and rub off as much of the gunk, gunk and gook as I can. And then just put, what I think what I'll do is just put a couple more strings on here and readjust the head. Somebody asked me how to do all this stuff a while back. So I think, well, making a video of doing it is actually a pretty good way to show someone how to do it. So I've got some uh, glass cleaner around here that I like a lot. And I'm gonna use it to squirt on this thing and then wipe off as much of the gunk as I can do. And I'll also see if I can find a proper size little socket to tighten the heads up. And then we'll, uh, once we get her cleaned up, um, we'll, uh, we'll uh, throw a couple more strings on her and tune her up and see what we think. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next little bit. Y'all hang around with me and watch, or you can go watch uh, Big Daddy, Big Daddy do, mess around with his 59 Ford. Now I'm gonna uh, take this bridge off of here so that I can not break it. And I'm gonna loosen the strings a little so I can get that bridge kinda out from under those strings. It's really easy to chip the edges off. These little notches where the strings go, it's really easy to chip those and so try to preserve them. I'm just gonna lift these strings out of those notches and then we're just gonna lay the bridge down and then I can slide it out. This is actually a cool, kind of a very cool little banjo bridge. I like the way someone's cut little things in the edges of it to uh, probably to try to improve the sound. That's always a good thing. It's a little warped, but once I readjust the head, 
it'll help to straighten it back out. Uh, this is the glass cleaner I like. It's called Sprayway, a lady in a hardware store. This is the glass cleaner I like. A lady in the hardware store back home said it was the best thing to use that wouldn't streak up your windows and stuff, and I found it to be very good. Now, before I clean this head, let me say this. This is a plastic head. A little moisture ain't gonna hurt it. If it was a skin head and you wet it, the skin would expand, and then if you tighten the head and then the skin shrunk, you could break a head. So when you're dealing with a skin head, which is a head that's made out of an animal skin, you have to be a lot more careful than you do with plastic. Plastic, you can get away with a lot. And I'm just gonna spray this all on here good, let it get soaked in good. In fact, this thing has got so many cracks and crevices that I'm not gonna take it apart and get down into, so. The more of this I can get down in there, the better. And actually, even the inside of it is filthy. So we're just gonna we're just gonna load her up, buddy. Load her up and load her down, all the way up the neck and everything. And I'm gonna try to do this without taking these strings off, uh, just because I want to. And uh, y'all might say, "Well, ain't he foolish? Ain't he foolish for doing that?" Well, let me tell you something. I am foolish. I've been foolish all my life. I expect to continue to be foolish from now until the time I draw my last breath. So, hanging around with somebody who is foolish and does foolish things is upsetting to you. You might want to uh, just move along. Go and watch someone who is much more respectable. There's a lot more, there's a lot more people who in their own mind at least are much more respectable than I am, uh, especially banjo players. In fact, there's an awful lot of banjo players out there who apparently they just have an amazing amount of respect for themselves, self-respect. They're very self-respecting banjo, banjo players. So like I say, I'm not taking it apart. So I'm not going to uh, dismember or dismantle it. I'm just going to wipe off dirt that I can get to. Hi, honey baby. Hi. We're washing a banjo. Huh? We're washing a banjo. All right. On YouTube. I'll be back in a few. All right, when you get ready, we'll take that big trip we talked about. We're gonna go up to the Harbor Freight store. I bought me a new trailer yesterday, and it needs a tongue jack. I looked on the Looked on the internet and the Harbor Freight's got, got them cheaper than you can get them anywhere as far as I can tell. So we're just going to ride up there and acquire one here in a bit. And I'll put that on there later. Uh, I'm thinking that trailer would be good for Mad Dog Bobby to use to haul hay because he's been using my little lightweight trailer. And hay bales about a thousand pounds each, you know. It's a lot for a little lightweight trailer, so I thought, well, he'd be better off. With a bigger trailer. That's all beside the point. All beside the point, and it's getting off the point that I came to make this video about, so I'll stop talking about trailers and go back to talking about bandos. So, what I'm doing here is just wiping away. Sometimes on a banjo, I'll just take a rag and slide it up underneath these little brackets. And then I can kind of pull it through there. When I do that, it sort of cleans down in the places where I can't reach my fingers up into. Uh, and uh, that's a lot easier than unloosening and reattaching all of them. Little brackets and screws and things. Now you can always tell the history of a banjo by the marks that are left on the head. 
someone has played this one claw hammer style a little bit uh, which is interesting because usually most people play scrug style when you play scrug style you leave marks down here when you play claw hammer you leave them up here so it's like this has been played a couple different ways which is good it's nice to know that the banjo itself has had some experience so not only you know on top of teaching someone to play I don't have to also teach the banjo to play which is always always a little added added benefit there <laughs> Looking better. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm going to go and uh, get me a wrench to fit these little bolts here and uh, tighten up the head and I'll show you how that's done. <clears throat> All right, now I'm gonna tighten the head. Uh, the way we're going to do this is, uh, oh, I didn't pull that out yet, did I? All right, maybe I should, that's okay. Each one of these little nuts down here will need to be adjusted a little. Now, I'm not going to adjust them more than, actually a little less than about a quarter turn each to start with. We're just going to go around. It's not like a car. You know where you adjust one side and then the other like on disc brakes thing like that at all you just want to grab one turn it by quarter turn even if it doesn't feel all that tight some of these are not real exacting in size a little bit hard to get that on too there you go One of the things I did, <clears throat> one of the mistakes I made when I had my first banjo, I put a wrench on that and just started wanging along. Well, it didn't take me about three seconds to break the head. And of course, after that, I couldn't play it. And so it sat in the, in the attic for years. And I actually never did fix it. I wound up buying another banjo after a while, but I'm just gonna say, don't do that. Don't bust the head on your banjo because you're over enthusiastic about trying to tighten it quickly. It's really best to tighten it slowly. But what you're doing here is you're pulling this banjo head down over the edge of this pot. You're tightening the tension on the head and it doesn't take too much tightening to break it. You gotta keep that in mind. It's best not to break it. I usually do this with a, a, a screwdriver type tool because it's a lot easier not to put too much tension on one than it is if you have a little handle to turn. But in this case, for the case of grabbing what I could grab quickly, I just grabbed this tool. I'll use that. Now right now there's hardly any tension on that head. In fact, you can you can you can actually when a bridge was on there you could see how it was sunk in. But I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna keep tightening it till it has a nice. You'll actually be able to hear a difference in the sound as I go. We're gonna go another quarter turn now. I'm mean, just so loose. I'm giving them a little bit more than a quarter. And I'm doing it really easily, gently. Sometimes when you've done this about a hundred million times, your hand kind of acquires the ability to feel when they're tight enough or when they're too, you know, getting too tight and all. 
that one there was way loose. I should probably say if I was putting this head on here and it wasn't already on, I probably would do that staggered tightening because I want the whole head to come down evenly and not more on one side than the other. But the head's already on here, so it's not like we're, you know, gonna need to do that. Now we're starting to get tight enough to where I can go a little bit more. Where I can feel some tension. And you can also, tell a difference in the sound. You can actually hear the head as it tightens up, echoing in the back of the chamber of the banjo. I don't believe these bolts have ever been off here because every one of them still has the little washer, little brass washer under it and usually if they've been taken off those brass washers would be lost some of these are real loose so I'm turning them a little bit more than I said but that's just because I can feel the difference I can feel it needs it there and they're slapped loose This is kind of a neat little example of a banjo of its type. This is a Hondo, which is not a great name, but I mean, you know, certain banjos come out in certain eras, like these aluminum pop banjos. They were they were popular at a certain era. Nowadays, uh, you don't see so many aluminum pop banjos. You see a lot more that are made out of laminated, like the cheap banjos would be like laminated plywood almost, but. I mean, they work good enough. Some of the early ones that they made like that, pots would collapse over a period of time. And they weren't strong enough to hold the tension, but uh, the ones they're making now seem to do pretty well. I remember Bill bought one for about a hundred bucks and it was good enough, you know, it, it, it played good, the neck was straight and it held its tune and there was nothing wrong with it. Good little banjos, I kind of like, like I've got an old K out there that, uh, I just kind of like it because it's an old K, you know. Uh, it's not necessarily that great sounding of a banjo, but you know, it, it represents a particular time period in the, in the whole banjo thing, you know. And you can tell that's getting a much higher pitch to it as we go along. And getting better. I'll go just a little bit more. off his head a little bit up here. All right, now I'm gonna slip the bridge back in.
Now the way to Yeah. The way to uh, figure out where your bridge goes is you measure from the nut here to the 12th fret. You measure that distance down to here, and that should be the same. Another way to tell is to pull a harmonic, which means you go 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, there's the 12th fret. And when you fret, when you play that fretted there, sounds like that, and you pull a harmonic, meaning you hold your finger slightly to the top of the string, but you don't depress it. So when I fret it, it's higher, which means this nut needs to go further down. Nut bridge needs to go further down a wee bit. So I'm going to move it down a wee bit. In fact, it looks like it looks like there's an old mark here. It doesn't look like it would go down that far. right right there now let's find us a couple more strings I need a fifth string and a second string so I'm gonna dig around in my banjo bag over here where I keep stuff like that That's an 11, and that's a 12, and I think that would be, uh, let's see, 12, 13, and that's a 22, that's a big string, that's an 11, so we've got 11, uh, we want 11, and a 12. So we'll put the 11 and the 12, let's see 11, that's 11 thousandths and 12 thousandths. The 12 thousandths is the second string, 11 thousandths is the first string and the fifth string. So, we will, Add the oops. We'll add the second string first and then the fifth string. A little bit cloudy today. Uh, a little bit of moisture in the air. Uh, the, the air feels good. I mean it's it's a crisp and clean feeling. Very nice. Every bridge has a little bit different setup. I like this bridge, it's a good one. I'll show you it in a little bit more detail in a bit, but let me get the end of it fastened. Oh, and I've got an old string on here I'm gonna have to pull off. I'm need my leather man for that. Let me go get that. Charlie, you wanna go in while I'm going in? This just has a piece of old string still stuck on it, and I'm going to pull that out of there. 
disconnect it so that I can get the new string in there. This string is wound in properly, the one next to it. And I'm probably going to unwind and rewind it. Uh, the string should come up through the middle and go through the hole instead of coming up to the outside, which is the way they wound the one next to it. It's not correct. Not for my... And you know, it might be correct for you. Everybody might have a they different want. wind their string. For me, that would be incorrect. I wouldn't like that. So, what I'm going to do is just... Hopefully I can do it without breaking it, but since this is going to somebody who's new with a banjo, I don't want one peg to turn the other way than the other peg. I'm just going to unwind this one, see if I can wind it back in the opposite direction without breaking it. Probably won't work. Probably will break it. We'll try it. Charlie. He's out Hi, here. He's being a good boy. Huh? He's out here being a good boy, Mommy. Now I'm going to wind it back so that both of these turn in the same direction. And that string might break later. Especially why I rewound it, but if it does, it does. And we'll replace it if need be. So I'm going to retune this now. fifth string on which is the one that goes on this little peg down here Tighten the these these are friction pegs, these fifth stirring pegs, and uh, there's a Phillips head screw in the end of it. And it's not at all uncommon to have to uh, adjust the tension on that to get them to hold. So let's see what she sounds like. I think we can play her now. Uh. together so that they match. This one is a bit more expensive and a, and a lot heavier banjo.
notice I have to retune these strings as I go because I'm tightening the others. It flexes the head down. It loosens the strings, so you have to keep adjusting all the strings. <laughs> good enough good enough to learn on so I'm gonna I'm gonna bend this little wire down where it won't poke or pinch anybody and I'm gonna snip it off so it won't punch anybody's eyeball out and this one here I'll stick back under here somewhere try to get it out of the way this one here needs to do the same thing we'll give it a little pinch and a poke and we can put that away and uh, go on and do our other things. But I think that's uh, I think that's a good enough banjo to, uh, <clears throat> to to have and learn on. strap on it, honey baby. Look at that. It's mighty fine, mighty fine. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, little banjo. Okay. Would you like to ride to town, little lady? Yeah. All right. Well, I'll put my stuff away, clean up my little mess, and then uh, we'll motor. We'll go motor into town. Hmm? We'll go motor into town.
I used to have a lady that wrote a, a society page for the local newspaper for our little town. Now keep in mind, our little town was only about this big, and there was hardly anybody there. And so every week she would write, on Thursday, the so-and-so family motored over and visited with the so-and-so family, and they dined on deviled eggs and fried ham, and you know, it was, it was like that. That was the society page. People always motoring over to somebody's house. No the joy. So I need to come out and make a little cor correction while ago I, I tuned this banjo with that banjo and I didn't realize that I had a capo on that banjo on the second fret which makes this higher than this without the capo. So I need to lower this because this is tuned, should be tuned in standard G. I don't want to give it to somebody who's learning to play with it tuned in A or something like that and then have all the confusion that goes along with trying to explain well that's not really how it's supposed to be tuned so just let me <clears throat> I said I come back and redo this by sounds much deeper than this one is because that one cost about 15 times what this one cost and that was made out of nickel uh nickel plated i don't know why my camera keeps shutting off that way I did that a while ago too what i'm saying is this was made out of tin and aluminum and that was made out of nickel plated brass so this one sounds like and this one sounds like so it's kind of a difference i'm gonna uh i'm gonna snug the head one more time now that it's had a little chance to sit and for the strings to, to kind of, you know, get settled in a little. And then we'll uh, be ready to, we're taking this to church with us tomorrow. The, one of our friends from church was at a, at a dinner the other night with her. And some, somehow it came up that I played banjo. She said, I always wanted to learn how to play banjo. And I said, well, guess what? We can make that happen. So I'm gonna take this over and give it to her after church, and we're gonna sit in a we're gonna sit somewhere after the church service and do a quick little beginner banjo lesson with her, get her started. Now, if there's any of y'all watching that wishes you could learn to play the banjo, I have banjo lessons online on YouTube here. In fact, if you go look in the playlist from my home page on YouTube you'll probably see something that's probably titled something like banjo tutorials or how to play claw hammer banjo or something like that and I'm guessing you might find about a hundred or so banjo claw hammer playing videos on there and if you if you watch them and uh, pay attention and, and, and pick along with me there for a little while you'll have the hang of it I try to make it as simple as possible. I told her that no musical talent is required at all to play the banjo. And the people that know banjo players know that. And uh, it doesn't matter to me if she understands music or can read music or has even heard music before. I can still get somebody started. And I told her there's only one rule for banjo playing as far as I'm concerned, and that's that it has to be fun. If it ain't fun, 
but we don't want to do it. So I don't care about any of the other details there. It's good and snug, I think, all the way around. Let's see if the song will play on it. break this head. We really want to go easy here. I'll come back this way a little. Okay. Okay. 